Classroom. We're, we're going to analyze a couple of documents today. We're, we're going to first of all, we're going to make it rain. Yeah, we are. Right? And then we'll look at this one where we're still making it rain, and we're going to look at where that money is going to. Um, and we're going to connect some maps in here. So I guess we could start with uh, this one. Yeah. Looks like maybe the cover of a magazine. Yep. A familiar one. Life magazine. The Happy Scotsman. You know. $10,000 bill, $1,000 bill, looks like gold coins. Yeah, he's kind of dropping it all over the place. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, the this great philanthropist, right the uh, steel magnate, magnet, magnate. Yep. I think this is the right word to use there. Um, just all around good guy for the most part. Right. And, you know, again, what we see in here is that, you know, when he is put in political cartoons, you know, there's a lot of reference to his background. Uh, he was Scottish, so you see the kilt there as well. Yeah, one of my students is like, why is he wearing a dress? A dress. It's like, it's not a dress, it's a kilt. It's a kilt. And then you hear, you have him again in another political cartoon, you know, wearing that kilt. Yeah, and I love this one because the kilt itself is actually like the American flag, you know, so kind of representing his two allegiances, you know, being a Scottish born citizen but immigrate to the United States and America is where he will make his billions. And again, he, this guy, you know, as we brought up before, he had very, very humble beginnings. Yes. And now he's, you know, made this huge fortune and it looks, you know, if we have these two cartoons right, it looks like he's starting to... Very different away. beginnings than the other captains of industry, than the Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers, and the J.P. Morgan's. There's that famous story of J.P. Morgan's dad is like, feel that son? That's what a million dollars sounds right. like. You know, so he, he definitely had humble beginnings. Like, yeah, Rockefeller did as well, um, which makes me wonder, you know, when you look back at him and where, whether or not we're trying to decide if these guys are captains of industry or if they're robber barons, you know, when you look at the fact that this guy grew up poor and he did eventually give a lot of his money away. Almost all of it. Of course, there's other part, part pieces of the story to it. Yep. Um, when you're looking at it, but he did wind up giving a lot of it away. A lot of these guys, you know, and the two that I'm thinking of, Carnegie and Rockefeller, you know, they didn't grow up with money. So they had to kick, scratch, yep. punch, whatever they had to do to kind of make it to the top. And again, we're talking about an era where, you know, the government had a hands-off approach to business. Uh, and, and here these guys were constantly growing up and in fighting and survival. Yeah, and in this political cartoon, you know, we noticed the college graduation caps. Oh, yeah. You know, for universities he built in Glasgow, in Edinburgh, in St. Andrews, and it looks like Aberdeen, all cities in Scotland, his home country. So although he, you know, becomes to America and becomes an American citizen, his heart was almost always in Scotland, you know, and helping out those. And then, when we look at where this money is going to, you have an idea, you know, Mr. Kogan was telling you, it's going to these colleges, but it also looks like right here, yeah. it's going to libraries. And... You know, when you're looking at, I guess, what you're looking at here, now that you have, you know, colleges, you now have libraries, you're also thinking about legacy as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, what kind of legacy does and, this leave behind? It's almost like he understood the value of education, where education could get you in, in life. You know, and by donating a library, I mean, okay, right, obviously you see a college. Sure. But there's that great scene in um, uh, uh, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. where he talks about getting a college education for $3 so in late, late fees at the public library. You know, you can. You could teach yourself to become a plumber. Sure. You could teach yourself how to become an accountant, yeah. how to do anything yeah. at the public library. Now, it's going to involve a lot of work, a lot sure. of reading, but you have access to education for free at a public library. And when you look at what public libraries have become, what they do, yeah. you know, book reading clubs for children, mm -hmm. you know, and if you look at the access, you can go and rent DVDs today. You know, you want to talk about learning, yeah, whatever a DVD is. You want to talk about learning, you know, now, of course, you can go in and learn how to uh, learn how to speak a language. Yes. They would, at one point in time, tape cassettes, you were able to buy, uh, borrow those. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of services that a library does provide. Free passes to certain museums. Yes. I know that's a common one. And when we look so at your access to, to, to knowledge, I, now, yeah, the access to knowledge. I love this. I this love is great. This I'm glad when map. you told me about this. This map represents every single public library donated by Andrew Carnegie. That and is. obviously you see a large concentration in the Northeast. Now, Carnegie is alive during the Civil War. You know, he 
probably had allegiances sure. to the Union, Absolutely. you know, based on this map. We see not a single public library donated in Arkansas, one in Mississippi, even out west, only one in Nevada, one in Utah. So there's definitely allegiance. His, his um, oh, company Pitt Pittsburgh. is in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Eventually, you know, Ohio becomes a major basis, too, because a lot of his iron mines and coal mines are in Ohio. Yep. A lot here in New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey. Uh, and it almost got me thinking. Yeah. You know, all right, if these places have access to more public libraries, I'm not saying Arkansas doesn't have a public library. I'm just saying they don't have a public library that was donated by Andrew Carnegie. Right. It got me thinking, where do these individual states rank on our highest educated, least educated maps? Now, when we were in college in the 90s and... You know, I do recall since we're bringing up Arkansas, and again, this is not to be cruel, in the 90s, I don't know where they are now, they were pretty low down, mm -hmm. uh, much lower down on- Which was know, one as, of the criticisms- I think 48. Which was one of the criticisms when Clinton, Clinton was elected in 1992. He brought him up two, pace, two he brought them up like two spots, yeah. I think. Yeah, that, that Arkansas was a very low state as far as educational standards and yep. the levels of kids who graduate college or high school. Yep. So you interlay this map, with a map of the highly educated and least educated states, and it's like, okay, Massachusetts, you're ranked number one. Wow, high concentration. New York, you're ranked number five. Wow, a lot of public libraries donated by Carnegie. Yeah. Pennsylvania, wow, you're in the top half of the United States. Um, New Jersey, number seven, a lot. Arkansas, zero. Oh, yeah, 50. Yep. Louisiana, Mississippi bottom right california you know okay now there's not a lot but no. california's population back then also wasn't what it is today california top half now it doesn't always fit and of course this there's, there's probably other explanations to this as yes well. there's you know, other would, outliers would now corroborate this now obviously yep. you look at you look at um ohio and indiana who are lower on our educated list and there was a great concentration yeah. You look at Virginia, and there's not a lot. You look at Maryland, there's not a lot. And, and they're higher on our educational list. Yeah. So this is not like a, getting into a causation correlation, yeah. but it just got me wondering. It does. You know, how sense. much of an impact the donations of public libraries by Carnegie, how much of an impact his loyalty to the Union yeah. in the Civil War so it's looked that way. played yeah. in, in, in 150 years later the, the educational rankings within these states. That is a lot of libraries. It's a lot. Jeez. You know, if you figure, okay, this what, looks what like does a, it take? Like an outbreak map for <laughs> a, a pandemic. What does it take? Know? What does it take money-wise to build the oh actual building gosh. and then put all of the books in that building? Yeah. And it really gets you to appreciate the amount of money <laughs> that this dude has. I mean, if you, have, if you contributed to the building of one in your lifetime, you know what? Bravo. Exactly. You did a good thing. Exactly. I mean, this. You know, and, that, and like, exactly. You know, you go, to, like you go to college. You go to college <laughs> yeah. and, you know, you donate some money and maybe they name a room after right. you. Right. <laughs> like, wow. It's... Carnegie Mellon University. Carnegie Hall. Right. You have Carnegie, Carnegie, Carnegie. Yep. Or Carnegie, as the Scottish would say. That's awesome. Yeah. Anything else we need to do this? I love how we put these documents together. Yeah. All right, great. Well, thanks for watching.